Section 2 of The Maker of Rainbows. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Jill Janovitz. The Maker of Rainbows by Richard Legallion. The Maker of Rainbows. It was a bleak November morning in the dreary little village of Twelve Trees. Nature herself seemed hopeless and disgusted with the universe as the chill mist stole warily among the bare trees, and the boughs dripped with a clammy moisture that had nothing of the energy of tears. Twelve Trees was a poor little village at the best of times, but the past summer had been more than usually unkind to it, and the lean wheat fields and the ragged orchards had been leaner and more ragged than ever before, so said the memory of the oldest villagers. There was very little to eat in the village of Twelve Trees, and practically no money at all. Some of the inhabitants found consolation in the fact that at the end of the blessed brood the cedar keg still held out against despair. But this was no comfort to the gaunt and shivering children left to themselves on the chill doorstep, half-heartedly trying to play their innocent little games. Even the heart of childhood felt the shadows that November morning in the dreary little village of Twelve Trees, and even the dogs and cats of the village seemed to be under the same spell of gloom, and moved about with a dank hopelessness, evidently expecting nothing in the shape of discarded fish or transfiguring smells. There was no life in the long, disheveled high street. No one seemed it worth while to get up and work. There was nothing to get up for and no work worth doing. So naturally, in all this echoing emptiness, this lack of excitement, anything that happened attracted a grateful, alert attention. Even from those cats and dogs so sadly prowling amid the dejected refuse of the village. Presently, amid the November numbness, the blank nothingness of the damp, deserted street, there was to be seen approaching from the south a curious little figure of an old man, trundling at his side a strange apparatus resembling a knife-grinder's wheel, and he carried some forlorn old umbrellas under one arm. Evidently, he was an itinerant knife-grinder and umbrella-mender. As he proceeded up the street, he called out some strange sing-song, the words of which it was impossible to distinguish. But though his cry was melancholy, his old puckered and wizened face seemed to be aligned with some inner and inextinguishable gladness, and his electric blue eyes startlingly set in a network of wrinkles were as full of laughter as a boy's. His cry attracted a weary face here and there at a window and door, but seeing nothing but an old knife-grinder, the faces lost interest and immediately disappeared. The children, however, being less sophisticated, were filled with a grateful curiosity toward the stranger, and left the chill doorsteps and trooped about him in wonder. A little girl, with tears making channels down her pale, unwashed face, caught the old man's eye. "'Little one?' he said with a magical smile and a voice all reassuring love. Give me one of those tears and I will show you what I can make of it. And he touched the child's face with his hand and caught one of her tears on his finger and placed it glittering on his wheel. Then, working a pedal with his foot, the wheel began to move so swiftly that one could see nothing but its whirling, and as it whirled, wonderful colored rays began to rise from it, so that presently the dreary street seemed full of rainbows. The sad houses were lit up with a fairy radiance, and the faces of the children were all laughter again. "'Well, little one,' he said when the wheel stopped whirling, "'did you like what I made out of that sad little tear?' And the children laughed and begged him to do some other trick for them. At that moment there came down the street a poor old half-witted woman, indescribably dirty and bedraggled, talking to herself and laughing in a creepy way. The village knew her as Crazy Sal, and the children were accustomed to make cruel sport of her. As she came near, they began to jeer at her with the heartlessness of young, unknowing things. But the strange old man who had made rainbows out of the little girl's tear suddenly stopped them. Stay, children, he said, and watch. 
And as he said this, his wheel went whirling again, and as it whirled, a light shot out from it so that it illuminated the poor old woman, and in its radiance she became strangely transfigured. In place of crazy Sal, whom they had been accustomed to mock, the children saw a beautiful young girl, all blushes and bright eyes and pretty ribbons, and so great was this murmur of their surprise that it drew to the doorsteps their fathers and mothers, who also saw crazy Sal as none of them had ever seen her before except a very old man who remembered her as a beautiful young girl, and remembered, too, how her mind had gone from her as the news came one day that her sweetheart, a sailor, had been drowned in the North Sea. "'Who and what are you?' said this old man, stepping out in front of the gathering crowd. "'Are you a wizard that you chained a child's tear into laughter and turn an old, half-witted woman back to a young girl? You must be of the devil.' "'Give me an ear of corn from your last harvest,' answered the old knife-grinder, "'and let me put it in my wheel.' An ear of corn was brought out to him, and once more his wheel went whirling, and again that strange light shot out from it, and spread far past the houses over the fields beyond, and lo, to the astonished sad eyes of the weary farmers, they appeared waving with gold grain, waiting for the scythe.' And again, as the wheel stopped whirring, the old man, who had remembered Crazy Sal as a young girl, spoke to the knife-grinder. Again he asked, "'What and who are you? Are you a wizard that you change a child's tear into laughter, and turn an old half-witted woman back to a young girl, and make of a barren glebe a waving cornfield?' And the man with the strange wheel answered, "'I am the maker of rainbows.' I am the alchemist of hope. To me, November is always May. Tears are always laughter that is going to be, and darkness is light misunderstood. The sad heart makes its own sorrow. The happy heart makes its own joy. The harvest is made by the harvestman, and there is nothing hard or black or weary that is not waiting for the magic touch of hope to become soft as a spring flower bright as a morning star, and valiant as a young runner in the dawn. But the village of Twelve Trees was not to be convinced by such words made out of moonshine. Only the children believed in the laughing old man with the strange wheel. Rainbows, mocked their fathers and mothers, rainbows. Much good are rainbows to a starving village. The old maker of rainbows took their taunts in silence and made ready to go his way. But as he started once more along the road, he said with a cynical smile, "'Have you never heard that there is a pot of gold at the end of the rainbow?' "'A pot of gold?' cried out the whole village of Twelve Trees. "'Yes,' he answered. "'A pot of gold. I know where it is, and I'm going to find it.' And he moved on his way. Then the villagers looked at one another and said over and over again, "'A pot of gold.' And they took their cloaks and walking staves and set out to accompany the old visitor. But when they reached the outskirts of the village, there was no sign of him. He had mysteriously disappeared. But the children never forgot the rainbows. End of section two.